In the previous session, we talked about the historic transitions in human civilization that contributed to the emergence of the traditional infectious diseases. We discussed that although dramatic gains were made in the containment of infectious diseases through the 20th century, new infectious disease problems are continuing to em emerge. This realization prompted a number of scientists, such as the late Joshua Lederberg and others, to analyze the causes for novel infectious disease emergence and to identify the responses that are needed. In one of these seminal monographs entitled Microbial Threats to Health, Emergence, Detection and Response, they said, today's world is truly a global village. One can safely predict that infectious diseases will continue to emerge. They said, depending on the adequacy of our response and reactions to this threat, the situation could lead to a catastrophic storm of microbial threats. This monograph was finally published in mid-2003, right in the throes of an ongoing SARS outbreak. If there were any doubts whether new emerging infections remained a real cause for concern, SARS provided the ultimate answer. Before we go on, let us first define a few more terms. Emerging infectious diseases are defined as those that have newly emerged in the human population. Here, we have to differentiate infections that are truly newly emerged in the human population, for example, HIV or SARS, from those that are newly recognized but have been around for some time. For example, human metanumovirus, was discovered in 2001, but this was a virus that had been circulating in humans for over 200 years. So this was a newly recognized virus and not a newly emerged one. Re-emerging infectious diseases are those that were previously known, but are now rapidly increasing in incidence or geographic distribution. A third term we need to define is zoonosis. A zoonosis is an infectious disease that can be transmitted from non-human animals, whether wild or domestic, to humans. Here we see some examples of newly emerging or re-emerging infectious diseases over the past 40 or 50 years. You can see that they are geographically widespread. Most of these are zoonotic infections arising from animals, and many of them are caused by RNA viruses. Why RNA viruses, you may ask? RNA viruses have a high mutation rate, and this is because the enzymes that replicate RNA virus genomes are more prone to error, and thus continually introduce mutations into the genome. This rapid mutation rate allows RNA viruses to be more agile at change, for example, adapting to new hosts when they cross species barriers. What are the factors that lead to new disease emergence or re-emergence? At the center, we have the two main protagonists, the human and the microbe. We should note, however, that humans and microbes are not always in adversarial combat. Healthy humans carry many more bacterial cells than human cells in and on our bodies, our microbiome. And most of the time, these commensal microbes are beneficial to us. However, in some occasions, microbes can clearly make us sick. This interaction between microbes and humans is in turn modulated by ecological, genetic, biological, physical, and environmental factors that affect both the microbe and the host. Since humans are social and political animals, social, political, and economic factors also play important roles. Let us now look at specific factors that predispose to infectious disease emergence and re-emergence. 
These include microbial factors, climate and weather, changes in ecosystems and land use, human demographics, migrations and behavior, international travel and commerce, technology, industry, and intensive animal husbandry, breakdown in public health because of poverty, wars, or natural disasters, and finally, deliberate human actions with an intent to harm, in other words, bioterrorism. We will now take each of these factors and see how they contribute to emerging infectious disease with relevant examples. First, let us take microbial factors. Microbes have one major advantage over humans, that is their speed of replication. Some bacteria divide every 20 minutes or so, while we humans need around 20 years to come to reproductive age. Thus, microbes are incredibly agile and can adapt to adverse environments quickly. The emergence of resistance to antimicrobial drugs is thus not surprising. In the latter part of the 20th century, emergence of such antimicrobial resistance was matched by a pipeline of novel antibiotics coming from the pharmaceutical industry. More recently, however, microbes have been winning this war. A recent WHO report says that this has become a problem so serious that it threatens the achievement of modern medicine. A post-antibiotic era in which common infections and minor injuries can kill, far from being an apocalyptic fantasy, is instead a very real possibility for the 21st century. Human activities have greatly contributed to the emergence of antibiotic-resistant pathogens. The misuse of antibiotics when treating humans and the abuse of antibiotics for growth promotion in domestic animals have greatly contributed to the increase of antibiotic resistant pathogens. Microbial genetic diversity and mutation can also allow them to cross species. For the example of influenza will be discussed in a later session. Chikungunya, a mosquito-borne pathogen, previously transmitted by the mosquito Aedes aegypti, has recently mutated to, to a form that can also be efficiently transmitted by an even more ubiquitous mosquito, Aedes albopictus, explaining the explosive spread of chikungunya in Asia in recent years. The vectors that transmit these infections also sometimes undergo change to evade control measures. The acquisition of insecticide resistance by the mosquitoes that transmit malaria is well known. But recently, it has become apparent that some malaria vectors also undergo behavioral change to evade very effective interventions. For example, the use of insecticide impregnated bed nets. Bed nets are effective in preventing malaria because malarial mosquito vectors bite late at night when people are typically asleep. Recently, some malarial vectors have adapted to bite earlier in the day, at time when people are still active, thus compromising the effectiveness of the bed net intervention. We will continue our discussion of the other environmental, social and behavioral factors that predispose to the emergence of infectious disease in Section 3.